In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Now I go to the third hypothesis, which says that the second language learner can build on universal grammar as incorporated in SS. Okay, well, if you actually simply go to page 235 and have a look at figure 6.7, you can easily understand the nature of this type of hypothesis. It actually says that L2 grammar is something, a combination of UG and L1 incorporation. What does it mean? UG is hand in hand with L1, okay, in developing L, your L2 grammar. It's like this, as easy as that. What do we say uh, the name of this grammar, uh, this type of hypothesis is? We say that it is full transfer hypothesis, as you can see it in the bold face here, or full access hypothesis. No difference. Full transfer hypothesis or full access hypothesis. Okay, so. What does it say? It says that line one, two, three, four. Yes, line four says, line four. At the end, there is the, the word the. The starting, uh, the starting L2 grammar is effectively a clone of the SS. So it's a sister of SS. Okay, cloning is like, for example, a kind of sheep which actually uh, gives birth to another sheep. But this new sheep, the, this, this new baby sheep is his or her, in fact, sister, not son, daughter, okay? Cloning is like this. Cloning, actually, they say it's something like copying and pasting, okay? It's like this. In biology, in genetics, actually say that cloning is something like this. So, uh, suppose that the mother gives birth to a baby. But this baby, suppose, is the sister of the mother. Why? Because all properties that the mother has is inside this little baby. Okay? This is cloning. Maybe they say it is not on no haram in Islam or not, but actually in biology, in genetics, they develop to understand good natures of this type of things there. Anyway, I want, I'm not going to talk about biology. I'm not going to talk about, let's say, um, genetics. I'm talking about language. The second language is the, a clone of, a clone of, okay, the first language. Okay, so why? Because L2 grammar actually uh, is something like a combination of UG and L1 grammar. Okay, uh, well, going to the next part, which, are, it, which is on the next page, page 236, is so easy and nice. When you say it is partial access hypothesis. Partial access hypothesis. Well, for partial access hypothesis, you can see a figure like, uh, which is figure 6.8 on page 236, which is quite similar to, in fact, the full access hypothesis with figure 6.7. Okay, it's like that. What is the difference? The only difference between the two is that on page 235, there are two arrows, uh, two flashes going to the L2 grammar. These two arrows are continuous without dotted lines, okay? But actually, when you go to page 236, this new type of hypothesis, which is partial access hypothesis, you can see dotted lines, uh, dotted lines. What does it mean? Partial access to UG, partial access to L1. What was the previous page? Full access to, in fact, UG, full access to L1. Again, these are the uh, uh, combinations that we have it here, okay? So, page 236 says, in this view, line 1, the elements of UG are not available in their own entirety. 
the initial state has a defective clone of UG present. Okay? The various alternatives can collectively be called partial access hypothesis, as you said. Well, below page 236, there are three versions of three versions which appear on page 233 called minimal tree hypothesis number one. And on, I think continues on page 237 with valueless features hypothesis type two. And uh, again on page 237, uh, somewhere in the middle of the page, which, which is the failed functional features hypothesis, which is there. I don't want these, in fact, little hypotheses related to the big hypothesis 6.8, okay, full par partial access hypothesis. Well, simply, we, save, we, we actually work with partial access hypothesis, but we don't need we don't need the three types of in fact uh, detailed hypotheses like a b and c or like one two three which appear on page 236 and seven so if you want to study it it's okay but it, it's only for you on, uh, to continue uh, working on it so we are done with these four hypotheses really coming from in fact three types of possibilities okay we said there are three types of hypotheses when actually we came to work on them we actually said there are four types coming from these three possibilities why we divided one hypothesis into two types full and partial full hypothesis Full access hypothesis and for partial access hypothesis. So one of these three things came to be two. Okay, so the result was four types of hypothesis related to, in fact, the development of UG. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to talk about final state of second language acquisition, which is so easy for you to understand. Let us finish it just now.